Hey, I'm Steven Kochitsky, creator of Glacier Archives. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find censuses circa 1900 from Eastern Galicia and Bukovina. And I'm going to do so using the Family History Portal section of the University of Alberta website. Now, if you find this video helpful, please do support the channel. And with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so to start, either type Family History Portal in Google and click on the one that's below the University of Alberta website or just click on the link that I left for you in the details section below the video, and it'll bring you here. Now, the first thing you see when you get to this website is some background information on the homepage and seven tabs on the left-hand side. Now, most of these tabs are for Ukrainian genealogy in Alberta, Canada, but we're gonna use these two to access censuses from 1900. So to start, if you hover your mouse over the fifth tab, three choices appear. If we click on the second one, map of Galicia and Bukovina circa 1900, it brings you to this map. Now just keep one thing in mind, this is a map of Eastern Galicia and Bukovina. So basically, if you look here, Sainik, Yaroslav, and Ravaruska, well, if we look at this map on Wikipedia, here we see Sanok, Yaroslav, and Ravaruska. So basically, those censuses cover this side of Galicia and Bukovina. Now here underneath we see a legend for distance and boundaries. And as for these colors here, those are basically for Ukrainian genealogy in Alberta, Canada. Now as we see this map is divided into districts and is interactive, which means that if we click on one of these districts, for example, let's click on Zbaraj, it brings us to a more condensed version of the map surrounding Zbaraj. And if we click here on choose a village, a list of villages appear. And if we click on one of those, I'll click on Sbaraj Misto and go, we get this census. Now let's go over this real quick. Here we have the village name. Here we see it includes the military garrison. Here's our circa 1900. Then we have our district or Povit. Then here we have the area in hectares, the number of houses, the total population and then the total population for males and for females. Then we have which religion they were, if they were Catholic, Greek Catholic, Jewish, or another religion. Then we have what their first language was. So if they spoke German, Ukrainian, Polish, or another language. And then here on the right hand side, well, we have animals. So we have the number of horses, cattle, sheep, pigs, and also we have the type of land they had. So in hectares, we have arable fields, meadows, pastures, gardens, high meadows and pastures, and forests. Now to save this document, you could always do a screenshot. So if you're in Windows, you could click on the Windows symbol and print screen. And if it flashes like that, you know it took the picture. Then if you go to your folders, and click on screenshots, the picture will be there. Now, if we open it and you don't want to have the whole picture, only the census, we well, click on this little symbol up here and you see these four corners over here. Well, you could click them and drag them to where you want. And save options. You could either save and it'll remain in the screenshot folder or save as copy and you could put it wherever you want. So you could click desktop, give it a title and it'll save to your desktop or anywhere else that you want. Okay. okay let's get out of here. Also, instead of choosing one of these districts, we could come here to this pull down bar and choose them from this list. So for the fun of it, let's go to Stare Sambir, go. And let's go to Stare Sambir, go. Now here we see pretty much the same information, except up here, we have an asterisk and includes Smolenica. And that asterisk we see by the number that represents area and animals. And this you might see because sometimes they added the information from a very small village to a neighboring village. So if we go to Smolenica now,
you see they don't have numbers for area and animals because it was included in Starisambir. And you see the asterisk with C Starisambir up here. Okay, let's go back. And if we go to Shemesh, Here we see the asterisk, but including three different villages in the surrounding area and covering only the area, not including the animals. The animals aren't affected in this count. So you have to pay attention to where there's an asterisk. Okay, let's go back. Back. And if I go to Tovmach and I go to the village Krivotulistari, until now we've seen an addition of an asterisk to a bigger city, but in this case, this village, which is small, has an asterisk for the area and land use added to the neighboring village Kirvatule Nove. But if we go to Kirvatule Nove, here we don't have a notation to warn us that these numbers include Kirvatule Stari. So just keep that in mind. Okay, let's get out of here. And let's look at one of these in Bukovina. Let's go to Starahuta. And here we go. Okay. Now, if we were to go back to our fifth tab and look at the third choice, Galicia and Bukovina, census circa 1900 by village, it brings us to this list of villages with the Povit or district that they're from and a link on the right-hand side. So if I click on the first one here, Adamivka from Berezane. It brings me to that census. But if we click with the right button of our mouse and with the left button, save as, and make sure my desktop is selected, save. I see it saved up here. Well, if I minimize this, I see my PDF document up here with the same information as we saw in our browser. And if I click on census statistics from my document, it brings us directly to the census. So you could even download this and put it in a folder and it's going to work. Okay. Let's close this and go back to our browser. And if we go here to maps, well, in section A, we have stuff for Alberta, Canada, but in section B, we have a few links of Galicia and Bukovina. Here in the first one brings us to that map. The second one to Povit Brode. As do these to the other Povits. And the bottom one, Ukraine today, brings us to this map, which is found up here. So basically, this section just brings you to the stuff that's already here. You don't really need it. So that in a nutshell is how you could find censuses. And as for folks from Alberta, well, to briefly go over the rest of this website, up here we have Sanitary Pioneer Monument. And these are the options we have. So we have introduction, names on the monument. Let's take a look at that real quick. And we have a big list. Then we have research hints, which basically brings us to a few links. Then map of homesteads represented on the monument. And it brings you to this map. And here's your legend. So if you want to find a homestead site, you look for the yellow squares. And to zoom in, you could do so with the plus minus or percent number here. So you could just type in the number you want and it'll zoom in. Next, we have Ukrainian day photos. So here you could select according to the year. So if I go to 2016, for example, it brings us to Ukrainian day pictures of that year. Then in the next tab, Lamont County project, we have the introduction and historical county map. We get to this map of Lamont County and we see squares of different colors throughout the map. Those are homesteads. And if we go to the bottom, here we see we have a legend. And if we zoom in, here we see if it's yellow, there's no data. If it's pink, they came from Bukovina. 
and if it's orange they came from Galicia and if we were to scroll up here we see the name of the folks along with the year and with the color code well we know that these folks here came from Galicia and if we zoom out here we see quite a few of them came from Bukovina as well okay next documenting church properties we have introduction church map and church list if we go to church map this is what we get and church list we get to this list with the general locality alternate area parish or cemetery name and denomination next finding aids for east central alberta here we have a few choices let's look at the second one passenger lists by ship here we have two links the one on top goes to instructions on using the passenger lists by ship for our research and to go directly to the passenger lists by ship we would click here on the bottom so let's look at the one on top the instructions here you go these are the instructions and if we go back and click on the second one we get this list of 27 pages as you see here and it goes by ship name as you see in the first column then we have the image year of arrival and so on and so forth okay let's close this and now for passenger lists by village it's the same principle the top link is for instructions and the bottom link brings us to a ship list by village as you see up here in the first column then we have povit province or country and so on and so forth and at the end we have a link to that passenger list okay let's close this and this and if we look at homestead records by surname again the top one is instructions and if i go back the second one and it brings you to this list of homestead applications in East Central Alberta. As you see here, they're sorted in alphabetical order by surname. And over here in the eighth column, we have film. So if we click on online. It brings us to that record book. As you see down here, this is page one of 2880. To scroll through those pages, we could either put our cursor on this white ball down here and drag it. Or... We could use the arrows down here to go right or left. And notice the number here will always be an even number. That's because the left page in this case is 606, making the right page 607. If we flip to the next page, well, now we have 608 and 609. And if we go back and click on PDF, it brings you to that same set of records, but in a PDF file. And what's good about this is here, for example, if I put 607, it brings you directly to page 607. Okay, let's get out of here. And let's look at Homestead Records by location. Again, the top one is for instructions. And there we go. And again, we could use these two links to get to those files and so on. Okay, let's get out of here. And... Let's go to censuses. Let's look at 1906 for the fun of it. There we go. So here you'll find a lot of information on how to find passenger lists and homestead records. And finally, if we go to other useful links, well, here you have a whole bunch of useful links that you could go to to help you in your research. And that, my friends, is pretty much how to use the Family History Portal website. Well, I hoped you liked this video. I hoped you were able to find the village that your ancestors came from. If you did so, please leave comments in the comments section below the video. Do subscribe to the channel. Maybe give the video a like. Thank you guys for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video.